All right, well, why don't we go ahead and get started here. I'll call this uh, meeting of the Prudential Committee to order at uh, Fleming Street School on February 9th at 3.35. And the first thing is to see if there's any visitors or staff to be heard other than what uh, presentations are going on. And if not, then actually I'm going to turn the meeting over to uh, Principal Ryan for a moment. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Fleming. It's, it's wonderful to be able to host the board here this afternoon um, for your meeting. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, if I can yield my uh, monthly principal's report, my written report, to my wonderful students and staff who are here today to make some presentations. Um, our staff and students represent all three of our houses here at Fleming School. Um, so rather than tell you or write about the great things that are happening here, teaching and learning, I'd like you to sort of experience it from the learners and teachers themselves. So we have three presentations today. Um, first one from Ms. Hopper's class, our new robotics program, which is an example of next generation science that I know the board is very interested in. Uh, Ms. Foley, our wonderful art educator and the Mountaineer team um, have an iTunes self-portrait uh, piece to share with you that using the iPads um, to uh, do some great creative artwork. And then Ms. Foley again with the Synergy team um, are here to share with you their work on Mount Mansfield by day and night which is a beautiful mural that's been created by this team uh, that will be going up in the stairway uh, to the entrance to the Synergy team. Um, so I will turn it over first to Ms. Hopper. Uh, Ms. Hopper is our new fourth grade teacher here and she's doing some great creative things with her students. Davidson told me about the robot kits that I guess we're doing from the high school. And so it's my first time using them in a classroom, so we kind of just dove right into it. Um, and I have three students from my homeroom here to tell you a little bit about the project. So we kind of did it in three phases. Um, so Peyton's going to tell you about the first sort of part, and then Ben, the middle, and Jacob, the end. All right? So the first part was we took these kits and we had to check off on a piece of paper like two of a certain one and like a piece of like the pieces and it was kind of tricky because one of them was you have to count 60 pieces of like a small one and um, So we had to like get a lot of like pieces and count out how many of those pieces there are. And it was tricky because we could tell this, me and my partner could tell this piece apart from another piece. So sometimes you need to make sure you have like the right pieces when you like check it off. Make sure you have the right pieces. Thank you, Peyton. So the second part of our robot unit was building the robot, and you just took all the pieces that you made sure you had and read the directions here, and it was pretty hard to read all of them because like, a lot of the pieces look the exact same as the other ones. And um, you couldn't tell like which piece you need to use and stuff, but um, you had to like really carefully put it together and like really carefully look at the directions to make sure you got it perfect. Because me and my partner, we were done building the robot, and we had to like you know, like a week later, we had to go back and rebuild like the whole back end of the robot because 
all this stuff was built wrong and we had to go back to the um, For the left part of our robot unit, we had to program it and go through a mission. So if you like put it to turn right and put it with turn left, so we had to speak that and put um, the rotations. If it was if we had to go five rotations, but it was too long, so like 4.3 missions every time it kept on getting harder and harder so we had the first mission was to be in the big circle second mission was to, to go into the second circle or square and do a 180 turn and then and the third mission was to get into the smallest square and the fourth mission we had to get to two slots and then get into the smallest spot and then the last one we had to get through all four of the slots and get into the smallest circle to like finish the mission. So if you guys, do you want to go right across and just say maybe one thing that you learned from doing this project? That when you, oh, I know that when you program, it might not do what you wanted it to. <laughs> it, did that a lot with me and my program. Like it turned in a circle when we wanted it to turn. I said turn it circle. Mm -hmm. One thing that I learned was like you have to pay really close attention to like building everything like you said and make sure you do it carefully and slowly and make sure you get it right. Um, another thing was working with your partner, trying to get everything to go good and finding Thank you. So these guys wanted to show you quickly what it looks like, and then we have a little video clip so you can see the class in action coming the last day. Did you want to intro okay. a little bit? Well, I was just going to say, they, we have a big carpet with taped out marks, and they had different missions, like Jacob was saying, and increasing in difficulty. And I had it set up so that partners could work together and bring it to the carpet, test it out, go back as many times as they needed to. So every time uh, they would watch and then make adjustments according to the data they collected, what they observed on the carpet. So it may look a little crazy, but they're all... <laughs> They're all going back and forth, and um, there's a, a method to the So madness. they go back and reprogram? Yes, or they add to the program that they had, so they might increase a rotation or a degree turn or something like that. So they ended up, the missions themselves kind of allowed them to build on each one as they continue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, someone else try. <laughs> Do you have two wheels, Big Cat? Okay, you passed it. Go ahead, Brittany. It'll <laughs> <laughs> help. Yeah, yeah, I have a question for the young man in the middle. I forgot his name. 
When you said that you put it together and then it didn't work and you had to fix the back of it, when you first put it together, did you have pieces left over like I do when I try to put anything <laughs> together? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, but we were talking about this just before we came here, that this is like the most basic model, and so there are a lot of extra pieces left over, so it wasn't a... It wasn't a dead giveaway if they had extra pieces that they had missed a step along the oh. way. Um, and these guys were saying, we didn't even get into the sensors and stuff like that, which I think hopefully they'll get to do in fifth grade. So there's a lot more that these can, <coughs> can do. Yeah. Yep. That's a good job. Yeah, so EHS uh, program, robotics program, uh, we're upgrading their program. And so uh, through the connection with Dave here, our wonderful Eddie, he learned that they were uh, looking to uh, have some parts that they could donate. So we jumped on it and uh, we made that connection. And then we had teachers step forward who said, we'd like to um, teach robotics with our classes. So uh, Ms. Hopper is the first class to take this on, but uh, two other classes uh, are transitioning into this robotics unit next. Nice. Um, so we, we're really doing well with uh, Essex High School's leftovers. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So our next presentation um, is uh, the Mountaineer team and Ms. Foley. Right here. Here we go. Mountaineer iTunes self portraits. We started the project by taking photos of each other with the iPads in front of the green screen. We used a Semper Impose app to remove the background. Then we use the magic wand tool to select the common color background. We zoomed in to remove the rest of the background. Once we removed the background, we adjusted the color from the figure to turn it into a silhouette. Now we save it in a special file with a clear background called a PNG. We uploaded the silhouette into the app Sketchbook Express. We had to upload the photo from the camera roll. Then we learned how to work with layers as we added a color background. We chose the bucket tool and filled in the background. Final step was to add text. I am Ayla. <laughs> you can just put them if you want. Just some examples. All three classes in the, uh, um, the house did this as a getting to know you project. I. <laughs> you are me. <laughs> Go ahead. Plus I am me. <laughs> <laughs> I am Molly. <laughs> and that's that. Very Great nice. job, you guys. Ms. Ventoulis, you want to? So I'm Nikki Ventoulis, part of Team Mountaineer, my other senior team. With my other um, three teammates. And Lisa, this year, she always does integrated art projects with both fourth and fifth grade. And this year, she wanted to have a more team approach to it. So when she came to me, she and I talked about um, there's the, there's this space, like Dan said, as you sort of this, you go up the back stairway. And there's this empty space as you enter our sort of pod, as you would say, and I've always wanted to fill it with a mural. <laughs> and so Lisa so graciously said, sure, let's just do it. And so when you give something like that to Lisa, she sort of takes off with it. Um, and then we met as a team, and as a team we decided that 
In my room especially, when you come in in the wintertime, I have this most amazing view of Camel's Hump as the sun rises than if I were here late at night as the sun sets. So we decided to do one sunrise and one sunset or day and night, a sun and moon type murals that will both be on both sides. And then we really wanted um, all the kids to be part of it so they could look up and say, oh, I did that tile. Um, so they each got four tiles that they could do and um, it, was, it was just a really good, fun team project. So we're excited to have it put up. So there's a good video that kind of shows you what the final thing looks like. And then soon it will be up in the hallway. Yes. All right, team. Come on up and you can help with this ladder. Good job. Really? Team Synergy Mural. Romance Field by Day Kim. So students from submitted design ideas as by our Camel Sun and Mount Mansfield. The sketches were compiled and final de designs were created. Tiles were assigned to each student that corresponded to a grid. We started by priming 400 plus wooden tiles. Every student received four tiles that they had to number. Each student had to create four many paintings for each tile that matched the layout and colors on the grid. We spent several days painting and making masterpieces. It was really important to, kept, to keep checking the grid to make sure you were using the right colors. We had to know which end of the tile was the top so our designs would line up. Some tiles had to use more than one color palette. This could get a bit confusing at times. <laughs> He's really speaking the truth there. <laughs> Some pictures of kids and staff at work. <laughs> Miss Lee. <laughs> Once the tiles are painted, it was time to put murals together. will be hung in the back stairwell by Team Synergy. So we have two really cool, they're like under a minute, um, time-lapse videos. We all came together as a team in the gym and every student got to place their tiles and reveal it for the very first time. So it's kind of like a puzzle coming together. It was really fun. Oh, wrong one. Yep, there we go. Of course it was in order. <laughs> Screen it. Lay. We look really shaky and nervous. <laughs> oh no. Oh, you hate when that happens. Here, let's try this one. Could just be the internet being wonky. We'll try it again. Mr. D, I don't know if he's here and has any ideas. Well, anyway, an internet problem. We've got them on Google Drive. We'll be posting them on the website. It took about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes to assemble each one. But the big reveal, it'll be there. I'm not sure. We could try it one more time, maybe really fast. Refresh. It's pretty cool to see it come together, but we'll, we'll get it. Give it one more shot. We pass the point of no return. I think we're there. Oh, wow. We'll do the other one too. If only things went this fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> This was another great app that we used on our iPads, and well, and this was one iPad that we were able to film it. So let's just try this one again really fast. We'll refresh it. They're short, as you can see. <laughs> Come.
we started to get really nervous as that one tile at the top in the center wasn't making its presence. <laughs> wondering what happened to it. Oh, there we there go. <laughs> <clears throat> and this was the uh, camel's hump by night, and the other was Mount Mansfield by day. <laughs> it's really great having teams like this, like Team Synergy, that see fit to take that time when there's so much on their plate as classroom teachers to fit the arts in. So it's a, a really good thing, and I appreciate it. Great job, you guys. These are also examples of learning that can never be revealed through a standardized test, um, but nevertheless are really important opportunities to learn and, uh, and making time for these opportunities. Uh, as Mrs. Foley just shared, it's really important. Um, and so we really value this learning here at Fleming School and wanted to share a little window in on it yes. mm -hmm. with you today. Well, it's great because the kids can take such pride in it because it's something that they've all made, whether it's the robotics mm -hmm. or any of these projects, so it's wonderful. You know, I really appreciate things like this because it gives me an idea at budget time what we've put into it and what the students are getting back from mm -hmm. it. So. I appreciate the hard work that you all did. This is fantastic. And thank you for staying after school. Yes. Yes. <laughs> for good reason. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. No, it just yes. that you know. Beyond that, we've you know we've been very busy creatively. We had our annual dance performance uh, last week. Uh, we're fully engaged with our theater residency right now, and we hope that all of you can make it to the the performance of our uh, under, stories under the big top performance that's coming up here. Uh, next Tuesday and Wednesday night at the, on the stage at Essex High School. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, Jen? Yep. you have anything else for the other principals? Reports? I do. We've got a few things. Um, so I'll start with ADL. Um, the 2015 ADL GOB champion is 8th grader Monroe Shearer. And the other qualifiers on the team are seventh graders Sam Filippo, Caroline Smith, Jaron Cummings, and Caleb Ahern, as well as sixth grader Owen Kemmerer. They'll be practicing um, late spring and hopefully compete regionally in the state GOB. Um, the eighth graders in FACTS this trimester shadowed CTE culinary students and then got to open their own restaurant for breakfast and lunch and have the staff as their customers. And peer leaders <laughs> coordinated another very successful blood drive there. Um, their 
first trimester progress reports, reports went home, and as you know, this is the first time that they um, had the standards-based report cards. And with that comes a lot of questions, so they're actually going to be hosting an informational night in March to be determined to discuss the reasoning behind the shift to these um, and answer any questions they might have. The science teachers have also curriculum mapped the new science standards, which may result in some changes on the template as well. They do have a few upcoming events this next month. Their winter concert is the 12th at 7 p.m. The school script spelling bee is the 16th at 8 a.m. and they do need volunteer judges for that. Their pep rally is the 18th at 1.30 in the afternoon and they will be hosting the 45th annual basketball tournament um, starting on the 18th through the 21st and that starts at 4 p.m. Um, moving on to Hiawatha, in December they held their annual hand-to-hand -hand sale and the children raised over $250 to buy non-perishable food items for our community food shelf. Um, the PTO has had several things, including a fun run, a harvest festival, and they're going to be upcoming um, an international dinner, a pancake breakfast, movie night, and bingo night all to be determined. Um, I thought Tom did a great job of showing us the progress that they've made with the action plan steps and a lot that were completed already, um, such as their curriculum leadership team has been put together, the MTSS assessment and faculty has been done, um, their literacy and math consultation with Beth Moore has been completed, as well as the technology training. And they just have one public event coming up tomorrow night is their PTO meeting from 6.30 to 7.30 in the school library. And finally, Summit Street. Um, they've had several school-wide celebrations as well for being safe, kind, and responsible. Um, the students get to enjoy watching and performing skits at the assemblies to learn new ways to show their skills. The annual December lunch by Child Nutrition Services provided an opportunity for the community to come together and share a meal. Um, they were joined by the superintendent and the central office staff who came to serve them, the students, and their families. And they held a very successful international dinner in January. Um, they were delighted to have a student dance performance as well as professional African dance group there as well. They have a few events coming up. Um, tomorrow is actually the 100th day of school, so they'll have a celebration. Um, tomorrow as well, there's a PTO meeting at 6 p.m. Following that is a natural playground meeting at 7. February 13th is a PT family movie night. The 17th, an evening second grade virtual field trip to the Great Barrier Reef. And she wanted to remind everyone that every Wednesday morning, um, the walking school bus leaves from Densmore Drive at 7.35. And those are your reports. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone have anything to add? On the 100th day, I had to get moved to Wednesday because of the snow day. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I had to get moved. <laughs> One more day. Right, right. <laughs> snow day calls. It's for the next day. Yeah. <laughs> One more. So right. It's very, <laughs> care, very important to count correctly. Yes, yes Dan. I, I just thought of one thing I would <laughs> like the board to know, and I would have included in my written report, is that um, our school secretary will be leaving us. Um, she's taken a position in the U.S. Attorney's Office. Mm -hmm. um, she formerly was a legal assistant, and uh, so she's returning to that past career. So we search process underway um, and we hope to be interviewing candidates next Monday for okay. that position. Okay. Uh, her final day will be uh, Friday the 20th. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Next up, Mr. Geisler will present I brought mine from last time. <laughs> I'll take one. I did. Thank you. Okay. It's what you set out, right? Pretty I much. So. Or, very, <laughs> or very close. See, I can't do the color. I don't have a color printer. I oh, yeah. love having this for Just annual meeting. Mm -hmm. And stand out more. Yeah. Okay. Let's get this up. All right, well, good afternoon. As uh, the board knows, this briefing represents a, a culmination of several budget work sessions and encompasses both the school district and the recreation department budgets. Uh, there are several state law changes that impact uh, the school district in FY16 and beyond. Um, there's a requirement now that um, retirement for federally funded positions is no longer paid by the state, and we have to use our federal funds 
for that, uh, which basically means we have about 14,000 less in Title I money to use for salaries or other requirements, and we have to use it for retirement. Um, Vermont State Teacher Retirement System, um, there's now a requirement for us to make payments for new and unvested uh, teachers, and that's about $1,100 per teacher. Um, but like I said, it's just new and unvested, so it's not a big impact to Essex Junction in uh, FY16, but every year it'll become more and more of a burden. Right. Um, Universal Preschool has been deferred until FY17, but we're still marching forward with full implementation. Um, there is a, a, a bit of a, an increase in the statewide rate. It's now $3,000. Um, Whenever it is fully implemented uh, statewide, we're thinking that the base tax rate might, base tax rate may go up as much as two to three cents just for that impact. Uh, personalized learning plans are now going to be required for all seventh graders next year. Um, we don't anticipate much of a cost for the actual tool to do that, but there will be some some workload related to that. And then the last thing I just wanted to point out is the excess spending threshold is now anchored to the FY14 uh, statewide average spending per pupil. And that is only increased by inflation and then multiplied by 123%. In FY17, that percentage drops down to just 121%. Um, it's not a big deal for, for your district. You're well below and should be well below for the foreseeable future, but um, it is going to create some challenges for districts uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, this slide is a quick look uh, at the four budgets. Uh, the chart for the school district general fund will be discussed in more detail later, so I'm just going to point out a few details. Um, first, the board's guidance was to minimize education spending per equalized pupils. And the goal was to try to get below 3%. And as you can see, we hit that. We came in at 2.9%. Um, the excess spending threshold is calculated at $17,100. And um, we're at below $14,500. So you're under by about $2,800. So we're in good shape there. Um, the base education amount has to be set by law, but we're using the tax commissioner's recommendation now of that $9,459. Um, and the last thing is just the district spending adjustment is only increasing by 1%. That's the bottom right corner of the chart. Uh, what that basically means is that the property tax rate would be going up 1% if our percentage of pre-K through 8 students wasn't higher and if the base rate wasn't going up by 2 cents and if the common level of appraisal was, was level. Uh, the school district capital plan is uh, largely funded by capital reserve funds. Uh, we are using a large amount of funds in FY16 to try to accomplish a renovation at Summit Elementary School, but we're only increasing the new tax revenue uh, from $25,000 up to $50,000. The recreation general fund is just over $2 million and it's limited to a level tax rate. Uh, the REC capital fund is limited to one cent on the tax rate, which is consistent with FY15. And that's estimated at just over 107000 So I kind of made a quick reference to the board's guidance. Um, the board's guidance for the school district's general fund was to maintain educational quality, to support uh, school action plans, and to be sensitive on the burden uh, to the burden on taxpayers by um, coming in with minimal increase in education spending per pupil. For the capital fund, we needed to address high priority projects and to factor in the depletion of that capital reserve fund. For the rec department general fund, we were constrained by a level tax rate, as I mentioned, and the capital fund was limited to one cent on that tax rate. So we'll start with the school district's general fund and spend most of the time there. Uh, enrollment projections are a key factor in developing the budget. Uh, you can see that the FY15 projection was 1,046 and our actual count was 1,048, so very close. Um, our new projections show that we're going to have very stable enrollment for the next three years and actually fairly stable throughout the duration and staying at about a, a little over 1,000. So we're, we should be in good shape, according to the projections. Very unusual. 
in the state of Vermont it's, to see this kind of enrollment. Certainly not the norm. Trend. Yes. Um, this budget overview slide, um, just to go into a little bit more detail this time, uh, the budget increase is higher than inflation at 3.9%, but we're having increased enrollment. Um, so really, the more important factor is education spending per pupil, and that is obviously uh, the, the key tax rate factor. Um, about three lines down, you'll see that the capital fund contribution is increasing by $25,000 from 25 to 50. Um, the equalized pupil count is increasing 1.6%. As the superintendent mentioned, that's certainly not the norm across Vermont. Um, the education spending per equalized pupil, you see in FY15, our number was 14.043. The statewide average was 14.09. So very close to the statewide average in FY15 with obviously uh, what we would consider to be above average results for that. In FY16, education spending per pupil is under 14,500 and the excess spending threshold is 17,100. So as I mentioned, we're about $2,800 under that threshold. Um, let's see, on the education spending per equalized pupil, about three lines up from the bottom. Um, that, as I mentioned, is the critical factor for, for um, tax rates and we're at 2.9% increase, which I'm sure is going to be well below the statewide average since most uh, districts are dealing with decreased pupils. Uh, this is just a quick pie chart showing revenue sources. Um, about 95% of our revenues are considered state revenues. Um, about 3% are local and most of that is fund balance from FY14 surplus. Uh, we only have a small amount of federal revenues. That's actually all Title I funding for math and literacy support. And uh, other revenues are just a bond defeasance fund to cover long-term debt, which um, is actually going to be paid off in FY16. Significant revenue changes are shown in this chart. <coughs> Uh, the fund balance is down $55,000. Um, you know, once again, we're, we're fortunate to have any kind of surplus to roll forward, but as we build tighter and tighter budgets, this amount just keeps dropping each year. Um, tuition is down $38,000 because we no longer have tuition students uh, from North Hero. Tax penalties and interest are down $35,000 since the town is now collecting our payments um, but that is offset by decreased in uh, expenses since the town doesn't charge us for that service. Um, education spending grant is, is basically just the line where you balance your revenues with your investments. Um, special ed reimbursements are up $178,000 based on uh, the Agency of Education's estimate after they've reviewed our service plan for next year, which kind of forecast what we think student needs will be. Um, this increase is actually lined up with um, higher special education costs, which you'll see in a moment. All the other categories have kind of just been lumped together to balance it out, and you can see that in total those other categories are pretty level. Um, here's a pie chart showing expenses. Um, when you factor in shared service, which as you know is um, paying for high school employees that support your district, when you factor that in, um, salaries and benefits account for about 81% of your budget. Another 9% goes to the supervisory union for SU and special education assessments. Uh, about 7% is spread out over about like those eight items that are in the top left corner and then about three percent is captured as other which includes requirements like just your generic supplies equipment travel um, books etc grant it, i don't think people have talked about special ed as like a whole if we wanted to do it as a whole group you'd have to go into the salaries and benefits also Right, because it, it's like you can't just say look at that and say, oh, special ed is that much. Right, right? special. It actually is embedded also in the other yeah. stuff. You, right. you would have to somehow 
figure out, if we wanted to calculate it, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. we would and have to somehow figure out all the parts. Right, and, in, and those two line items there, the special ed assessment, which is sent to the SU because we have to book those costs in the SU, and then there's another one that just says special ed. Those, both of those lines are non-personnel, um, non-salary, non-benefit requirements, like outside placements, um, inclusion program. Right. So you're right. If you wanted to get the full cost of special education, you would have to take um, the special ed employees' salaries and benefits and carve that out. You're right. Correct. Okay. Okay. So this is where I might interject just for a second to say Act 153 is requiring us to move all of our special education. <coughs> Caters to the SU budget, and we were granted relief this year through a waiver. Right. And so next year, um, so we're going to ask for an extension of that waiver while we are in study mode for the red, because it wouldn't make sense to make that transition yep. if the SU dissolves. So, um, in the, however, if that doesn't happen, and we remain in SU you will no longer see special educators in that You would start to break out all the salaries and benefits and then it would become part of the SU assessment. Right. That's correct. correct. Right. right. And that would, and the SU assessment is not a, a budget that's voted on by the public. It's no, it gets broken up in, into each of the, right. our budgets, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And who's ever on negotiations committee will have a lot of fun if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Are you volunteering, Mara? No, <laughs> no, Tim is. Sure. Okay, this uh, slide shows the significant investment changes from FY15 to FY16, from budget to budget. Um, salaries are up, uh, it looks like, in an ordinate amount, but actually that's only a 3.1% increase, and that includes the staffing adjustments that we made. Uh, benefits are up about 4.6%, and most of that is driven by a 4.5% health rate increase. Um, the district has a higher share of the SU assessment because you have a higher percentage of staff and a higher percentage of computers compared to other districts since you have increasing enrollment. Um, special ed assessment is higher since we project twice as many inclusion program students next year as, this, as we had this year. Um, and then as you look at the rest of those, you can see that there's very minor changes in all the other areas. But we'll go a little more into detail on these. Um, the next few slides are going to show the significant expense changes. Um, since salary and benefit costs make up over 75% of the budget, um, obviously we review staffing very carefully. We look at enrollment projections, class size standards, and student needs. Um, as I mentioned, the salary is increasing 3.1%, and we'll um, look at staffing adjustments in a second. Um, special education funds will offset some of this cost because, as Tim mentioned, salaries and benefits include special educators, uh, special educators' salary and benefits, right. and so an increase in that area will result in higher special ed reimbursement. Um, Non-personnel special education costs are increasing about $64,000, largely because of the, the increase in inclusion program students. Um, but higher special education reimbursements will offset part of that cost. Um, private preschool and Growing Kids Essex Junction, that initiative, um, those are causing an increase of about $28,000. And we'll be increasing the number of private preschool slots from 60 to 70. Um, with our in-house capacity, that gets us up to about 100, uh, a capacity of about 100. We believe that universal access might get as high as 120. So we, we may still have to grow a little bit more to be able to fully meet um, universal access. But we're on track to satisfy universal access because basically what we're saying is we've built a budget that we think has enough slots for anybody who's coming and looking for a slot. Yeah. Um, eventually we may need to add a few more, but we think that this is enough for next year. Uh, staffing adjustments. This slide shows all of the staffing adjustments as, um, as we prioritize with principals. Um, the first two lines are actually reductions in the area of extended school year program and for K-3 French exposure. Um, ESY is now only going to be for eligible students and K-3 French was eliminated um, since there currently isn't continuity 
beyond third grade. There's a gap for fourth and fifth. And it also allows us to um, look at other higher priority needs, for example, um, computing those kinds of requirements. Uh, special <coughs> education and English language learner needs, the, the third and fourth lines here, those are actually based on current staffing levels, but there's an increase from the original FY15 budget to the FY16 budget, meaning this is the level of, of staffing we have We're today, at, right. but it wasn't included in the original budget that we built. Um, K-5 lunch and recess supervision allows for implementation of master schedules and should provide common meeting times for teachers, which um, has been an initiative that we've been trying to get at for quite some time. There's a small increase to ensure adequate before and after school supervision of students. Uh, another small increase at Hiawatha to make sure that there's the same amount of arts integration at all schools. Um, we have about $2,700 in there for student mentoring and in internship coordination at, at ADL. And then the last line is a Title I funding shift, which basically means that we're going to be paying for the math specialist at ADL with local funds, and we're going to be using the Title I funds to um, bring on almost two full-time positions for math and or literacy coaching uh, to improve instruction. Just what, one real, sorry, one quick question. That for the ELL, we had to add during the year, and so this is what we added. That's yes. Right. And so, and that's because of like influx of kids, right. basically. Mm -hmm. But so we think we're gonna just go in with that to next year and just we do the same thing again if we have to. Is that? Yeah. I mean, it, usually we can find a half a yeah a, a position if we need to. If I mean, we've been to. able to do that yeah. right, right. It, during the year, <laughs> so. Right, so the staffing level here would satisfy or support the needs that we know of. Right. If we have another influx, then we may end up having to shift FTE to again next year. And do that in the middle of the year again. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but, that, but that's the right way to do it. Right, yes. we're but, thinking that, <laughs> right. you know, it's hard, we can't it's hard to estimate. Um, we think we're okay. Yeah. Just like we thought we were okay last year. <laughs> right. Um, so I think we're going to stay with what we think is working right think now working and if now. there's an influx we'll have to adjust right, right. okay okay the um the rest of the budget adjustments are shown here um overall the su assessment only increased by about one and a half percent but as i mentioned your percentage of staff and computers is going up because your number of kids is going up um, payment to the u46 district for shared personnel is, is basically an inflationary increase um, maintenance of buildings and grounds is going up about $13,000. A lot of this is just recurring requirements, but the slide does show some <coughs> of the specific FY16 projects that we're looking at and that were included in the budget. Um, information technology has a number of increases and decreases, but the most significant increase relates to an upgrade of a server that runs the student information and financial system. It's um, your share of that cost. Long-term debt decreases each year and will actually be paid off in FY16. Um, whenever you look at the rest of the categories all combined, it's basically level. As a matter of fact, it's a, a small decrease there whenever you balance everything else out. And now for the, the fun, um, tax rate calculations. So the pre-K through 8 homestead tax rate calculation is shown here. That top slide you've seen before, but what it basically does is it gets you to the district spending adjustment percentage. The bottom slide then is um, kind of the calculation of tax rates, and we start with the tax commissioner's recommendation for a base rate of $1, which is a two cent increase from this year. You take that dollar, you multiply it by your spending adjustment, which was shown in the top chart. Then you multiply by the percentage of kids in our community that are in pre-K through eight, since they're not all, uh, and then you divide by the common level of appraisal, which is just barely over 100% right now. Um, so the resulting rate for pre-K through eight is about $1.03, and that's an increase of about four and a half cents. So the impact for every $100,000 of property would be a $45 increase. Um, I made a note on here just to, to remind you that the FY15 increase was $76. So it's much less of an increase than we dealt with 
for FY15. When you I, add, I like on that chart how much money you put up there. If we want to lower anything, uh, the rate by the uh, one cent, we have to reduce one hundred and fifty-one thousand right. dollars in our budget. Right, and that was, you know, you look at that and you say four and a half cents. Well, well, what would it take to get us another penny? Well, it would be 151000 which you can't do that without impacting programs. So, I mean, if it was $15,000, we'd probably still be in budget work sessions trying to pick away. But 151000 that's just, you, you can't do much with that without impacting um, quality. Um, this slide uh, shows what the tax rate looks like when you add the ninth through 12th grade rate from Essex High School, or from U46, I should say. Um, so whenever you combine the pre-K-8 and the 9 through 12 rates, you get a total rate of $1.58. Um, the impact for every $100,000 in property then is uh, an increase of about $64, which is a 4.2% increase in the property tax rate. Now, I made a note here that if it wasn't for that two cent base rate increase, then the impact would only be half of that, $32, and it would only be a 2.1% increase. But the fact is there is that two cent base rate increase. Um, once again, I, for reference, I put what the FY15 increase was, and that was $110 instead of just 64. So it, I recognize that it's an increase, but it's certainly um, a little bit of an easier pill to swallow than, than we were dealing with in FY15. Now my mouse has stopped working. There we go. Um, this slide shows the pre-K through income sensitivity rate calculation. <clears throat> so you still have the, Oh, did I go past it? Sorry, here we go. Um, you still have the same top chart, which gives you your district spending adjustment. And um, in this case, the calculations are a little easier because you just multiply it by the base rate and then multiply it by the percentage of students who are pre-K through eight. Um, the base rate, if, as you can see here, is increasing significantly for income sensitivity from 1.8 to 1.94%. So, um, people who pay based on income sensitivity will see less of a reduction in their tax rate. Um, so as you can see here, the calculation comes out at 1.99%, which would be an impact of $85 for every $50,000 in, in income. So if you made $50,000 for household income and you paid purely based on income sensitivity, your bill would be $85 higher. <coughs> Um, if it wasn't for that large base rate increase, that increase would only be $15 instead of $85. Um, so once again, you have to take that pre-K through 8 and add in the 9 through 12 rate. And when you do that, um, you come up with a, a total of 3.07%. And once again, that impact then becomes... Uh, $130 for, for a household income of $50,000. Um, but once again, that would only be $20 if it wasn't for that 0.14% increase. Um, I didn't put it on the slide, but people should be reminded that it's very hard to estimate what your tax rate or what your tax bill is going to be just looking at these two numbers because most people pay based on a combination of property and income sensitivity. So as a reminder, you really need to consult that town meeting tax grid, which unfortunately we don't have yet, but um, should be uh, included in the annual report and will certainly be available for the informational hearing. Uh, the gap between our spending per pupil and the excess spending threshold uh, continues to widen every year from FY12 till now. And like I said, we're about $2,800 um, under the threshold now that will start shrinking as um, they continue to just use that FY14 spending per pupil number uh, instead of changing it to um, statewide average every year uh, but as I said I think you're safe for the foreseeable future at least and it's very important to say stay safe uh, and under this threshold because if you're over this threshold every dollar you're over um, you're basically double taxed on. So it's very important to stay under that threshold and I'm very happy that we're well below it. 
Um, so next we're going to look at the district's capital fund. The capital plan has historically been funded with the district uh, capital reserve fund, as you know, with no tax implications. Um, to extend the life of the fund, an article was approved in FY9 through 13 to partially uh, fund projects with $100,000 in new tax revenues. In FY14, we had some, some issues. The tax rate was, was very high, so we didn't present that article in 14. Uh, we brought the article back in FY15 at just $25,000, and we developed that plan to incrementally increase that each year so there wasn't a, a big tax rate implication. And as I mentioned, um, this year we're talking about going from 25 to 50. And that $50,000 has already been factored into the tax rates that I just showed you. So that's already in there. Uh, the FY16 capital plan includes funds for um, roof repairs. So basically, we're just talking about what's in that red box. Um, FY16 through 18 funds will cover the replacement of the ADL roof and part of the roof uh, here at Fleming. Um, heat plant repairs, that's just a set aside for some unanticipated repairs that might pop up, like replacement of a burner or a pump. Um, information technology is for infrastructure, and um, for FY16, we're planning on buying a few switches and several wireless access points. Um, the summit renovation is the lion's uh, share of FY16's budget for the capital plan, and I have a slide that will look at that a little bit more in detail. Um, while it's not in the box, there is a placeholder in, out in 18 and 19 to look at a renovation for ADL, because that's the next big project we'd want to look at in the family and consumer science and special ed areas. So this slide um, gives a little bit of detail on the summit renovation. It shows you um, kind of an artist rendition of what the front <coughs> of the school would look like. On the left-hand side, it shows the schematic. And anything that's, that's shaded is actually additional footprint, additional square footage. Um, so we would have um, guidance space that would now be located up in the general flow and would be accessible. Um, this adds social worker and clinician space. It adds literacy and math testing space. Um, it adds a conference room for meetings, professional learning, and um, English language learning services. And it adds a lobby space for visitors and for whenever students are waiting for family members. So it's, it's hard to kind of stomp your foot hard enough to um, try to accent how important this project is. But if you've been to Summit Street School, I think you look at this and you go, wow, this would make a big difference. Um, so this is a, an important project and something that we hope to actually get support for and, um, and take care of this summer. Uh, this slide shows the status of the Capital Reserve Fund and the strategy to address the depletion of the fund. So if you look at that bottom chart, you can see how we will incrementally increase the new tax revenue, that, uh, that row in yellow. Um, so that there won't be a significant tax rate impact. So we've gone from 25 up to 50 for FY16. Um, we may have to tweak this each year, but right now it's looking like we'd go up another 25 next year and then maybe a 50, 50, 50, and then we should be able to um, get to the full amount that we need for uh, the capital plan by FY21. So to summarize the district's budget for the general fund, education spending per equalized pupil was um, kind of the key factor we were looking to try to control. And we've done that, I believe, to the maximum extent possible without um, sacrificing educational quality. Uh, the increase is about $400 or 2.9%. And as I mentioned, that should be well below the statewide average. Um, the overall budget is $18,627,735. Um, the capital plan is $565,000. Most of that is so that we can accomplish that renovation. But of that $565,000, we are only asking for $50,000 in new tax revenue. So the article for the capital plan will only be for $50,000.
And now we'll move on to the recreation budgets, which means we're winding down on this briefing. Um, we're going to begin with the general funds. And uh, this slide shows the significant revenue changes. Um, starting off with the fund balance, it's down about $20,000. It would actually be higher, but we're going to use some funds toward one-time requirements. Um, property taxes is increasing about $7,000, but that's based on a level tax rate and just assumes that the grand list might go up a little bit, so it's not increasing the rate. Um, parks, pools, and facilities are down nearly $5,000 based on a three-year average of revenues. Um, youth programs are up about $55,000. The increased revenues have a corresponding increase in expenses that you're going to see in a second. Um, which relate to a Washington, D.C. trip that's new, uh, new to REC. Adult and senior programs is down $17,000. Um, that also has a, a corresponding change in expenses. We're no longer going to do um, the long-distance overnight trips, so the revenue will decrease, but expenses will as well. Community, change, uh, community programs is pretty much level. Uh, licensed child care is up $307,000. So there's your, your big one. Um, most of the increase in the REC budget is related to child care, and that's because we have a much higher uh, enrollment in preschool village kids in Camp Maple Street. So the increase in revenue, you're going to also see increased expenses, but we have a higher increase in revenue than we do in expenses, which is what allows us to keep that property tax rate level. So on the investment side, um, salaries are up $204,000, largely for those higher enrollments that I mentioned. Uh, benefits are up about $46,000, which um, some of that is in line with the salary increase. Um, a lot of it is because of the health rate increase of 4.5%, which, by the way, is a good percentage. 4.5% um, is much lower than we were thinking it might be. Um, youth program services are up $52,000, and that's that Washington, D.C. trip I mentioned. Um, adult and senior program field trips are down uh, $15,000, and that's those long-distance overnight trips that I mentioned earlier. Um, licensed child care field trips and supplies are up $29,000 and are also related to those higher enrollments. Um, SU assessment and shared services are up about $11,000. Um, and then everything else combined is pretty much level. And we're going to end up, uh, we'll finish with uh, the REC capital plan. <clears throat> so the FY16 column includes requirements for um, resurfacing the baseball, baseball infield. Um, the pool, and maintenance, pool maintenance and repair line is the remainder of funds that we need for the small pool resurface. Um, we collected half of those funds uh, in FY15, and we've, we've got the rest in FY16, so hopefully that work can be done this summer. Um, maintenance equipment, from FY16 through 18, we have money set aside for the lease to buy or lease to own uh, payments for a replacement truck and a tractor. Um, the park amenities dollar amount will fund a new master plan. Uh, hard to believe, but it's been 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, it also includes some improvements to Park Street School, since the preschool is going to be in both of those rooms on the first floor. Uh, it allows for um, transitioning the existing maintenance garage to a camp room, and then uh, some additional costs related to building a new maintenance garage. And then uh, just continued landscape improvements. So to summarize the REC budgets, uh, the general fund is just over $2 million. But once again, it's constrained by a level tax rate. And I guess the caveat here is, you know, we're pretty much at capacity now. We've increased the program revenues almost as much as we can. So I think we're going to be okay maybe for a couple years, but pretty soon we may need to look at the tax rate and we may need to increase the tax rate because there's not much more room to increase program revenues. Uh, they've done a great job with programs and increasing program revenues which are now up to about 65% of the budget. Um, I mentioned the significant increase really is the increased enrollment for um, child care. Uh, the capital plan is constrained by one cent on the tax rate, which is consistent with this year, so no big change there. 
Um, this just gives you a, a quick reminder. There are four budget articles. There will be um, one for the school district general fund, uh, one for the capital fund, and then for recreation, the general fund article will actually make reference to the amount of tax revenues that you need, not the total budget. Uh, and then the capital will also be um, a budget article for recreation. And then just to finish with some nice artwork from ADL, um, the informational hearing will be on Monday, April 13th at 7.45 at the high school auditorium. And just a reminder for all the voters out there, uh, the vote will be on Tuesday, April 14th, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Essex High School. And I believe that's all I have for you. If you're comfortable with the budgets, then um, we would be looking at um, making motions to approve the budget and uh, moving forward with the warning. Okay. Do you need motions on the capital reserve funds? Um, the org notes actually gave um, just some suggested language. To, just those two? Yeah, I believe that's all that's required. I, I just want to interrupt to say with being on the Essex Junction Rex and Parks Committee, Brad did talk to us about how the programs are almost at their max of growth. Mm -hmm. So we did right. talk about that the other night. The other thing is I'm glad in our org notes that the um, report that um, their maintenance gentleman, Harlan Smith, included i think it shows that when they have in their budget things that they're going to do or improvements or buy equipment you can see from that that they're really doing a great job mm -hmm. so i think it's kudos to that i would agree all right so if there isn't any other discussion <coughs> on this piece of it I just need a motion for um, for the uh, EJ School District and EJRP budgets. I will move that we approve the Essex Junction School District General Fund budget for FY16 in the amount of eighteen million six hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Seven hundred and thirty-five dollars. Just doing. And you want to have a? I think usually they do it. We separate. do it. Do we separate? do it separate? Yeah, we do it okay. Separate. All right. Do I have a second to that motion? I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. So four zero. I will move to approve the Essex Junction Rex and Parks FY general fund budget of two million and seventy one thousand and eighteen dollars. FY sixteen. FY didn't I say FY sixteen? Just left out the sixteen. Oh, <laughs> FY sixteen a before friendly Essex Junction <laughs> Rex and Park general fund. Is there a second? Sure. Second by Tim. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0. Okay, so then the next step in this uh, that we need to do is to adopt and sign the annual warning. So what I'd like to do is to read the warning. The Essex Junction School District Annual Meeting Public Informational Hearing, Monday, April 13, 2015, at 7.45 p.m. The legal voters of the Essex Junction School District in the Village of Essex Junction, Town of Essex, County of Chittenden, and State of Vermont are hereby notified and warned to meet at the Essex Community Educational Center on Educational Drive in the auditorium of said school at 7.45 p.m. on Monday, April 13, 2015, to take action upon the articles below and thereafter to hold a public informational hearing on the fiscal year 2016 budgets. Article 1, to elect a moderator for the term of one year. Article 2, 
shall the voters of Essex Junction authorize the Prudential Committee to borrow money by issuance of bonds or notes not to excess, not in excess of anticipated revenues for the next fiscal year. Whereupon, after disposition of said business, said meeting shall be adjourned to the following day, Tuesday, April 14, 2015, when legal voters are hereby notified and warned to meet at the Essex Community Educational Center Union School District number 46 in the village of Essex Junction between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. to vote by Australian ballot on Articles 3 through 8. Article 3. Shall the voters of Essex Junction appropriate $18,627,735 necessary for the support of the schools for the year beginning July 1, 2015? Article 4. Shall the voters of Essex Junction appropriate $50,000 necessary to supplement the Capital Reserve Fund in support of the district's capital plan? Article 5. Shall the voters of Essex Junction appropriate $623,981 of tax revenues necessary for the support of the Recreation and Parks Department for the year beginning July 1, 2015? Article 6. Shall the voters of Essex Junction authorize the sum equivalent to a one cent tax on the municipal grand list for the Recreation and Parks Department Capital Reserve Fund? Article 7. To elect two Prudential Committee members one for a term of two years, and one for a term of three years. Article 8. To elect one Essex Community Educational Center Uni Union District Number 46 school director for a term of three years. What's that? Does that part have to be? No, that's just, that's where we, we have to sign that part. Um, and then we need a motion to to adopt and then sign and then we will sign this warning as read by me. I move that we adopt the warning as read by you just now. <laughs> Excellent. Is there a second? Second. Wonderful. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes 4-0. Can I compliment Grant on the budget? You can always compliment Grant. Yes. <laughs> because <laughs> I've, fact, I've said it before, but I've got to say, with going to the school uh, around the state, some of the meetings around the state, going to the state board meetings, when I we break off and we go into these sections and discuss universal pre-K or the excess threshold spending, it's... It's like we're there, we're doing it. And the questions that are coming from the board members sitting or superintendents that are in there, they're, it's not that they aren't at the level we're at. I think you're, you're there, Grant. You and Judy are there and the educational leadership team. The way you brought the priority list to us this year, it made the job so easy. And I know every school took a hit of something we cut, but you know, we did, I think that priority list that's developed by that team of all the school principals is a wonderful, mm -hmm. I agree. Painful good process. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good process working with the principals and, and feeling was. like we were all on the same page for staffing adjustments, and it's always a pleasure working with this board, so thank you. You're very welcome. And all those decisions were made by consent. So it's a great team. Yeah, consent of the leadership team. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to vote. But it was consensus. consensus. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, as we as we heard of that that uh, the warning that I read, we have two openings. To elect. You are here. I'm looking at you, and Kelly. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the. <laughs> just an idea. Just keep that in your mind. Well, I'll, I'll well, I'll drop I mean, we off can, the petition at your house. Mm -hmm. get that we can talk about the fact that we do have one one individual who's not not going to fill theirs, and it looks like a second individual who's not going to uh, to run for re-election. So we really do have two openings to right. to attempt to fill. Um, we also need to, to decide how we would like to communicate the budget this year because we're 
doing things a little bit differently in that we're not having the communications team directly doing doing some of the budget, budget communications. So, you know, are, are we going in with the Union High School Board and doing either the postcard or a brochure? Um, yes, there was um, a kind of. I guess consensus to, or maybe not, maybe it was a vote in that case, <laughs> a vote to mail something out. Um, it was kind of up in the air whether it would be a flyer or a postcard. Uh, ben and I have started um, putting together a postcard. We think a postcard is probably sufficient because the postcard actually is um, half of a, a, of a letter size now instead of being smaller. So that gives you a decent amount of space to, and it's basically just to give some of the big High points, points and, and really just to remind people of when the informational hearing is, when the vote is. Um, so we're working on putting together just a, uh, a postcard that we would probably give to um, your chair and the U46 chair to look at mm -hmm. and, and um, give us a thumbs up on before we send out. So postcard, I think, is where we're headed for that. And then, of course, we'll have the annual reports that um, will be available online right. and at various locations. And then uh, the front porch forum postings that you did before, right, right. that you would take charge of those as well. Are we allowed to um, send out the postcard information in Friday notes? Or is that, or is that considered... Um, I don't, personally, I don't think there would be a, you, you can't advocate for a yes vote yeah. on anything that you send out. So as long as you're just sending out information, I think you'd probably be okay. I, I'm, I don't know about, um, you know, I can't think of anything that, anyway. uh, huh? I mean, send it out to all the residents anyway, don't we? Right. Yeah. So, so it, like, it doesn't really matter doesn't. that we need to, because that's only some of the residents. Well, but at the same it's time, it's just another it's so. another uh, avenue of, of passing Let me information. Let research it and just make sure that it's, yeah. it's uh, something yeah. we can do without any problems. I think it's just a good <coughs> reminder. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and maybe for in that case, maybe it's more of a just reminding people of the informational hearing, mm -hmm. reminding people of the vote date, as right. opposed to putting tax information. Yeah. information right. In right. Case, so. right, and again, just, just uh, reminding where where all of the information is, mm -hmm. is housed. I mean, here, here is where to go for it all. I mean, we're not gonna be able to pass out everything at, at one right. time. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'll be happy to, to, to write up the uh, Front Porch Forum, um, basically distributing the information about the budget in, in like a series of, of postings. Yep. Um, I've done that in the past, and it seemed to work pretty well. Um, I get feedback on, on the pieces rather than, than the whole thing that you're done trying to, trying to answer yeah. questions from lots of different parts of the, mm -hmm. of the whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if I sit out, I mean, I can just put that as since we voted on it tonight, mm -hmm. I can put it into the summary for this meeting. Right. <coughs> also, so that could be just the first piece uh, of it. I'll try to pick out. Like, okay. And then the other piece, you know, in, in all honesty, is <laughs> I guess the, the to me is, is the more tricky part is is trying to fill those two slots. Um, well, I think if you have room on that, well, the postcard's <laughs> yes. going to go out too late to do the petition. Yes. Yeah. But uh, well, the petitions yeah. have to be signed. Thirty signatures, and did I see signing by the night? I know it's 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 early part of March. I, I didn't yeah. write down the date. Yeah, March. Uh, Is it March 9th? Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's that, yeah. Or else you do have to come back. Yeah. Yeah. We make you. We're gonna all like vote your write your name. Yeah, in. We, oh, no. that was one of the questions we had. If, if you wanted to add the information on the postcard, if so, we had a deadline of when they'd have to go out. But just so you know, uh, Lynette Corbin did put a. Uh, an announcement in last week's Essex Junction mm -hmm. Essex Reporter and um, my perspectives piece will be in this week and mine is totally dedicated to uh, school board seats because technically 25% of the S of our board is going to have new board members when we lose four out of the 16 
That's a big change. Right. So there's two at the high school, two here at PC, yeah. uh, and actually one board member from Westford who completed a term will continue on, but that's really five kind of new board members to orient. and So it's a big deal. Uh, it's important work. Um, any feedback any of our board members can give us as far as how to do this work in a way where you're not out so much. I mean, we're really cognizant of uh, the time it's taking. Um, you know, I think tonight when you see those students, though, speak about, you know, the resources you've provided for them and mm -hmm. what they've done with those resources, um, you know, I think it's rewarding beyond yeah. any other volunteer work you can do sometimes when you know that you have, you know, 1,100 kids um, that really count on the decisions you're making, uh, and they do truly do make a difference in their lives through resource allocation and your involvement in the schools. So um, it's a great it's a great job <laughs> to volunteer your efforts for. Um, and there's a lot of support of current board members uh, to welcome in new board members. So really hope that we'll continue. Oh, yes, we'll welcome and say, would you like this committee? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we can do uh, to encourage um, community members to come oh, forth. Right and I think that might be a great use of front porch for them right now. But what I've always seen work the best has been word to mouth. Yeah, right. yeah, you know, yeah. inviting as board members, tapping people on the shoulders and telling them how they'd be a great contribution to the board. And right. Mm -hmm. The postcards might, we, depending on the timing, there might be a little bit of a window to hit that in the postcard because we are talking about getting the postcards out earlier yeah. this year than last year. The, and one of the big reasons for that is when you wait too long and you send it out right before the vote, um, the legislature may end up passing a tax rate that's different than all the documents that we've put together. And so then you would have an annual report that has one tax rate, and then you'd send out a mailer that would have a different tax, and it would cause some confusion. So we were thinking maybe if we send out a mailer like shortly after the traditional town meeting day to remind people that, yeah, that happened, but yours is in April. Mm -hmm. And then it would also be early enough that all the information going out would be consistent. Right. Uh, and if we do that, then there might be a couple of days wiggle room. I mean, right. we may be able to get it out just in time for a last shot. And um, yeah, and what I was, and I'll send a note to the educational leadership team as <coughs> well to have them encourage parents and, you know, they have an opportunity to write Friday notes uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So if they can include the openings and encouragement there. That would be great too. And as you're communicating, if you need any data points or any slides or anything, yeah. feel free to let me know. And anything. Michael, I think I, I sent you my, the, yeah. the draft of the budget overview the, for the annual report. And um, whenever I update the briefing for the informational hearing, I will send that along to you. Right. It'll be pretty much the Yeah, same I can't as imagine there's going to be significant changes. Right. Yeah, like yep. the tax grids, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And the deadline for our reports, Ben, do you know them off the top of your head? February 20th. February 20th. Yes, Ben just sent out a reminder <laughs> of it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've been ignoring that reality. <laughs> February <You> know, <laughs> You do. <laughs> the reality of doing board work now versus, I'm, I'll say it, I say it at every meeting, I'm old, <laughs> versus doing it now versus like 20 years ago <laughs> is we're not meeting actually that many months. We only are meeting like uh, 10 months, maybe nine months. And I think the hardest thing, depending on who wants to run, I've had one person ask me, are you still meeting in the schools? I mean, they don't want to give up some vacation time or have to take off of work mm -hmm. in order to be a board member. So I think that might be out and about with people because we're meeting in the schools for afternoons a year now. And then we have an annual planning day mm -hmm. that usually is half a day or all day. But 
it comparatively to when we used to do a hundred meetings a year. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've split up the committee task teamwork with CCSU so that there's members from every board and I think we've done it to try to share the load. The hardest thing I think is whoever is chair still takes the brunt of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wish there was a way we could figure out how to ease up Mike's load. But, but it really isn't bad. I mean, I feel it's great. Yes. You, you feel great. You feel, well, right. you feel great. Yeah. What really you're easy. doing? Yes. I mean, I mean, right during budget season, Sorry, right, guys. Tim? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, like anything else, it ebbs and flows as far as yeah. how busy you mm -hmm. you are and how it fits into your your schedule. Sometimes it's it's super easy, and sometimes it, you have to make choices. But uh, I think it's something that's worthwhile for anyone that's interested in in, in being service. part of the community in a in a in a unique way. It's but it's such a positive feeling, like, to see the kids doing their robotics. I mean, it feels good to be helping towards the education, right. you know? Mm -hmm. I think there's a, a bit of that. Because yeah. I can't yeah. teach. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I have had one person approach me, um, and I'm, I've been giving his name and email to contact Michael. So. Yep. Great. I haven't been contacted yet, but I, I, I know you've been doing that. And if, you know, and please, Jen, or any of you, you know, I'm more than willing to sit and talk with people if they have any questions okay. to okay. allay any fears and promise it'll be fun. Oh, <laughs> That's right. Okay. Well, I'll, then I'll take care of, of, of the Front Porch Forum postings. And if there's anything that, that you specifically want to see in a postcard or a flyer, I mean, that... I'll, I'll get with uh, with Brian and kind of make that decision as far as it's going to be a, a postcard or, or a flyer. But if there's anything specific you want to see in there, um, other than, you know, the kind of information we put out before, okay? I mean, that's just the reality of it. Then let me know, okay? All right. So any task team updates since, uh, since we last met? So we can start with... Uh, Thank you for coming. Communications, we'll make that really go very quickly. We are supposed to work on the red uh, communication, right. but I suppose we okay. need to meet <laughs> and connect with that group somehow. But you're going to go on it? I, I'm That's on the, the, that committee. Yeah. Um, Wait. <laughs> the board voted me on. You were gone to France, and it's probably better because I, I going basically down, so. volunteered <laughs> because I know everybody who has children in the school district. I don't, so if we're meeting a lot of times, like if we have to meet twice a week, it's not like I'm going to miss bedtime mm -hmm. with children. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt it fair that I do it. So feedback that you guys all have, though, give mm -hmm. to me. You know questions and stuff. So, when when yeah. do we announce the people that were voted on that committee? So, um, Essex Town is meeting tonight, school district, and um, they're going to uh, send letters to um, all everyone, thanking them for their letters of interest. They will see of their 10, uh, minus their board member, uh, they're going to check on availability. They just did it in reverse the, in the way we did it. So they haven't checked their availability against the proposed timeline. So they're going to get that information. And then they'll uh, be sending a letter. And, and they've invited us um, mm -hmm. at our board training board chair and superintendent training last Thursday uh, that we send the same letter so we're going to draft a letter and send that out either the end of this week or the beginning of next week. So um, I, I have the tentative list that you all agreed upon at our last meeting and um, I think that it would be helpful for those names to be approved. Um, you know, so that we have some documentation of that. And I think we should do that 
um, after we're gonna have to schedule probably a meeting between now and then because we didn't name them and then we didn't come out of executive session and name those people because we were all trying to do it in a time when everybody finds out about it at the same time right so we were trying to be in time with Essex Town and Westford met last week and they have their appointment to make so everybody's got their appointments ready but they're sort of waiting for that announcement and that's what we're trying to craft this week you so, know we have a leaders okay. at work meeting next Wednesday that could be at perfect 6 30 Tuesday I'm wondering if actually, people could pop yeah, in Wednesday. just at 6 15 from the PC the 17th yeah that might be a perfect time because then we'd have um, everybody um, at the same time so we didn't want to get out of um, right. synchronization with them um, and we'll have two of us there already so we'll just need a third just for our, our four four. Four. Yeah. yeah if you could come Wednesday. by that would be yep. perfect Wednesday. Yeah. Next is it next Wednesday yeah. Yeah. we yeah. changed yeah. that about 6.15 we changed it to Tuesday to Tuesday because right. yeah. they have a conflict on Wednesday what is the date on Tuesday the 17th it is the 17th it was going to be the 18th, but we... Oh, oh, okay. Remember? Yeah. So it's changed to the 17th. Because you have policy, yeah. right? Okay. That's yeah, what the conflict right. was. Is it too late to meet to, uh, to adopt the members for that committee? To approve them? Too late? When, when do you have to announce it with the town of Essex? Well, hopefully... Um, well, they're doing theirs tonight. No, they're not doing actually doing the announcing, but they're... Right. Uh, sending their letter. Um, actually, when does this air on RATN? <laughs> when does this air? Sunday. Like the 7th? Or the 14th, I should say? I think it's the 15th. It's always the Sunday. Oh, it's the 15th? It's Sunday at like 5, I think. Do you really watch it? <laughs> no, I don't. I thought you watched it. Watch it. You I know, watch it. I watch it. I've had somebody yeah, call me. My neighbor me. watches it all the time. Mm -hmm. It'll be on demand. Two, two, two days. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. on demand much sooner. Okay. So we won't. I was shocked. Well, I actually took a call or some somebody that had watched our ETN and had some issues with our last meeting. So oh. that was interesting. <laughs> always welcome feedback. Always yes. feedback to improve. It's always welcome. Yeah. So you think um, we're okay though? To, to I mean, to on the seventeenth to to take care of that to essentially announce or whatever. I mean that's. Eight days from now. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. And I did at when I was at the uh, uh, board chair superintendent conference. I did talk with uh, with Kim, Kim a little Gleason, bit, uh, Mark uh, Drapa, and Mark Andrews, and we talked just very briefly about what it was looking like as the composition. Just talking about Balance. you know male female. Yeah. Um, you know, kids, no kids, eight, you know, age, age um, sure, yeah, sure. all those things. And, and essentially their breakdown and our breakdown was basically the same. So well, it's always looking good. We and if we 14 have to, people apply. Yeah. Right. If we have to, um, you know, could we have a, a meeting? Of course it has to be five days. One, two, three, four. So Monday the sixteenth. But the difference between the Monday the sixteenth and Tuesday the seventeenth is that yeah, a day. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking we'd do it before. Is it negligible? I mean, yeah, to me it's just do it on that. Use that Tuesday. Yeah, right. I think that should be. And fine. the names could change because things have, may have happened between right, now right. and then. We send it out, and the yeah. slate could change. Um, so let me just check and see if um, where we are with. Um, with Essex Town sinking that, and if we need to adjust, we will. 
Yeah. Okay. So I think the thing is, whatever, in terms of the communications committee, whatever help we're going to be providing, whatever communicating we're going to be doing relative to the red study committee, we just need an interface. Mm -hmm. So once that committee all gets together, mm -hmm. then like, I think you, they might also have ideas about right. what they want to do. So whatever that is, mm -hmm. I don't know if Liz is going to go on it. She's going to be on the communications. She's on communications. Mm -hmm. So no, what? Okay so, well, okay, so she's just like me. Right. right. On communications. And the same with Kim what? Finney. So the original people from each of the boards on communications are still on that. Yeah. Right. And uh, we're talking with Essex Town about adding a board member to that and then encouraging right. the additional people who sent in letters of interest since we had many. Mm -hmm. um, and so did Essex Town to engage them okay. perhaps with Come. the communications right. Right. so that they stay abreast because mm -hmm. they had a natural interest in yep. the process anyway um, and so that's part of the letter we're constructing oh, okay, where great. you know we've appreciated everyone's interest um, and those folks that weren't chosen for the red study committee that there's still much work to be done through communications so we need to follow up with them after after the letter basically. right as like, soon as that happens right. so it's all going to happen in the next nine days the nine junctions days. candidates were excellent excellent all of them excellent it H was hard decision hard very very difficult decision and i trust that the people that aren't selected will be attending those uh mm -hmm. red meetings whenever the meetings they can be public, there right? Right? they're yep. all public and i have the feeling that the interest in it that i assume that they're going to be there yeah. so I suspect they would want to take us up on being on a communications committee. Right. And even right. if not that, at least they all receive the dates, the proposed timeline at any rate, so they can be more than welcome to attend those meetings and, you know, and provide feedback to Marla as your representative um, or Kim Gleason as the Essex Town representative, uh, school board rep or um, Martha Heath, who will be the Westford School mm -hmm. Board representative on the committee. So those three board members were appointed um, at different meeting times, so we know those. So we're just now waiting for the seven uh, Essex Junction community members, the nine Essex Town, right. and the one Westford community member. So we need to set a meeting for communications. Then yes, we've been talking about when. So, yeah, <laughs> so we just have to project whether we will want to do it after the first meeting of the red or. Probably. I mean, that's certainly we're going to have one after that. Right. The only thing would be. We'll probably, right. we'll as administrators, we'll probably do the first, which is to announce the committee. The, the selection of the committee members have been defined, you know, reiterate who's representing which community, um, you know, certainly thanking people. Yeah. So we'll do like an initial, the committee's been seated, um, and the first meeting and location. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still all of that work to. Yeah. All right. Can I just clear yeah. a couple of things? Is that on a time to me? leaders at work next week. Leaders at work usually starts at 6.30. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. so if we meet like at 6.15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, that, that works. Yeah. And then also um, I've had one or two people who send in letters of interest reach out wondering when the decision will be made. So I'll keep them in a loop. I'll just let them know probably oh, yeah. next week. Um, but then who will be contacting them in May for the board? Everyone will be contacted through a, a letter that's going to be drafted mutually with Essex Town and Westford boards. So by mail or email? So it, yeah. it'll probably be by uh, mail. mail and email, probably. If, it's yeah, yeah. Same as long as we have all their email addresses, then we'll, yeah. we can send it to both. I think email would probably, yeah. Okay. So that'll go out next week? Yes. Sure. 
So everything gets announced probably next Tuesday because right. um, everybody should be ready by then. So unless something changes, you can have them all in there and just be ready to hit send. Right. Until after and we we'll say. we just get those letters drafted. You know. Mark and I are working on that this Whatever week. number to zero, and then we're, then you hit send. We'll be good. Okay. So 615, leaders at work. We'll make our decision. Perfect. Thank next you. Tuesday. And you'll be able to next stop Tuesday. by, next Tuesday. Tim. Yes. You'll be in town still? Yes. Okay. Excellent. All right. Policy. Um, the last meeting we had. Not everyone showed up, but Vince Canillo was thankfully there, so he showed us all about the new website. Um, he also said um, that we could stop by and he could get us all Chromebooks or something to start working on mm -hmm. um, with Google Docs so that we can be working between the meetings on what we're going to be working on and get a lot more accomplished. So Excellent. We're excited about that. And so then your next scheduled meeting is? Next week. The 18th. Next Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. And then we've kind of just talked about leaders at work. <laughs> yeah, leaders at work, I think the only thing to share with other board members is the CCSU board. Um, take my phone. Mike, who is chair, was responsible for giving a formative evaluation of the board, of the superintendent. Mm -hmm. And that did She's occur in executive <laughs> session. Um, yeah. And I think that was the latest. And now, leaders at work, we've got to go back and we're compiling information on needs and so we can do an annual work plan for the upcoming year. Thank you. Oh, and we're talking about looking at the language. Next oh, week's right. meeting, some of the language that was used in the standards. Mm -hmm. and, created some confusion so if you would read that and give me feedback on words or different language you would like to see in that in the you rubric know, the rubric right. mm -hmm. we're going to start to tailor it a little bit more toward that's race. the one that from a while ago yeah, exactly. yeah. The, yes that, one. yeah okay. we picked everything from a, a study and everything and now that we're getting into it now we can put our own language into it. Now that we've done a year of this, we're finding yep. that we're confused. Well, we like do. the word harmony was in <laughs> one of the rubrics. And what does harmony it's mean? Very harmonious. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when you make yep. decisions, it can't be always harmony. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the next meeting is Tuesday, the uh, 17th. At 6.30 for leaders at work, and again, 6.15 for, uh, for EJ to formalize our, our, our names for the study committee. Yep. All right, then um, the other part of the CCSU board update that I was going to give, that Marla took my thunder as far as oh, sorry. The, uh, <laughs> the formative assessment, is that um, we had uh, Deb Anderson, right? That's her name now? That's correct. Formerly Formally. Deb Robbins. Um, give us a, a fairly lengthy and informative presentation on the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Air Ca Care Act and how all of the various insurance scenarios um, come together in some fashion. Um, or don't. Okay. Or don't. <laughs> uh, just basically let us know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of information that, that they take care of. Uh, as far as making sure who fits under what what umbrellas for the uh, Affordable Care Act. And I think, no. Yes. It's had, in your org notes. Yeah, we had some of it in here. Um, and I didn't know. She had asked if, um, it's right here. if we had any interest in her doing any kind of presentation directly to the board. But I thought just with what was in the org notes. Yes. Yeah, it's number 10, yeah. and you can just click on the um, PowerPoint that she put together, and then if you had questions, you could just send them all through Mike, mm -hmm. Michael, and he can um, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Good. have her come in yeah, and address your fine. questions. It is quite complex, um, but <laughs> certainly something, the rationale behind understanding is certainly preparing those because we'll go into negotiations next year and understanding um, the Affordable Care Act will be really important as far as um, when we look at benefits and medical care for our teachers and staff. So, I gotta say, I was shocked 
watching the presentation or that Deb gave, it just shocked at all the pieces we have to consider in the school, our school district, versus you know doing long term subs versus how Seasonal that's going to play out or CCSU employees and I was amazed at the amount of work I think it's going to create and I, su I suspect if people think budgets will ever go down they're not going to go down in that area mm. no and I thought Deb she's always so efficient mm -hmm. and knowledgeable she did a very good job mm -hmm. okay Next up is our consent agenda. So, did you get my email? I did. I did. Can we pull the Absolutely. 120 15 minutes out? We we did not have a quorum. You'll see in the minutes from January 20th. It was only Mike and I at that information meeting. And so we can't technically, we have nothing to vote on. So. Yeah, what meeting? Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we can pull those can pull that. From, the, from being an approval of minutes. Right. However, you can see that in your org notes, here was what transpired. Yeah. I mean, if we want to post, meeting. if we want to post those minutes because uh, I didn't look to see if the Union High School Board had a quorum or if anybody else did, but I mean, it would be good. It's good to have them officially mm -hmm. as to what was said that night and what came out of it. It's just that we can't officially vote on it. So I wanted to pull those out of the approving the meeting minutes, and I'd like to pull the approve the field naming. To talk about it. To talk about it. Okay. Okay. So we can pull those. So do we talk about that first? Well, let's approve the consent was... agenda without those items. And okay. We can do it. You can approve the warrants and the minutes and name the minutes that you'll approve. I move yeah. that we approve the consent agenda with uh, approval of warrants, with the approval of the meeting minutes from one nineteen fifteen. And one twenty-two fifteen. Okay. okay. Is there a second? Sure, I'll second it. And Tim Shirley seconds that one. Uh, any other discussion on, on on those? No. All those in favor? Say aye. Aye. Okay. That motion's been approved. So let's have a discussion on. And field naming. Without naming the name. Right. Without naming right. the name. My concern is a few years ago, we named a field over there, and I was on the rec committee, and I, I don't agree with naming things like that um, after people, just because if we need to do a strategic plan, and move or change a field, people get very upset about it and it creates a little issue with the community. So um, I reread the policy and it states right in the policy mm -hmm. on naming things that um, they can't, basically can't expect it to always be that way. Yeah, it doesn't extend it to perpetuity. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. it doesn't extend, but I think when we do this, people think it does. So I just wondered if when we do the motion, can we just reiterate that, that it does not mean that this extends into per perpetuity. I can't even pronounce yeah. it. <laughs> I don't see why not. I just, I, I mean, think it's better. Policy. I mean, just that's refer, to, refer to current. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I just know with doing strategic planning and the Which growth over there right. and moving a maintenance garage yeah. or building this built, there's things that are moving and changing, and I just, I just don't like to see us locked into something. I, I think that's a really valid point. I mean, we had a really difficult experience a few years back 
that I think set a whole lot of other things into motion. Correct. Um, and really caused some concerns for the community. And um, I think Marla has a really good point there. Um, and reiterating that this is up and until there's a need to change it. You know, you'll honor it. Um, but if, if a field dissolves for whatever reason and something else is put in its place, then, then the name also has to change as well. It's kind of tricky, mm -hmm. um, but it's that emotional attachment that people then get. I think it's just a very valid point. Okay. I think the... So the only thing is, I mean, I think one thing why it's great is that so much of those fields is handled by Essex Junction Little League. Yes. Yeah, we don't. So we don't really, they do it all. Yes. Right. They're the ones who take care of those fields. They're That's the ones right. who do everything on them. Brad does not do it. We don't do it through Parks and Rec. Right. So like, I feel like it's like pretty much their fields. Yeah. Like, so that's what they want to do. I'm pretty, I'm good with it, right? Yeah. Except and that's their people, right? So, so like, yeah, there's like sort of a technicality of it's like the, the village, the village's park that we are like the board of, yes. right? And then so we let Little League use the park, mm -hmm. but we let them use it like to the max, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, right? like, like take care of it, take care of it, like do everything and yeah. do, do what they want there, right? And so that's great. That really works out, I think, kind of for everybody. <laughs> and anybody can use a field when, you know, Little League's not using them the whole rest right. of the year. So that's not a problem. They're okay with that too, right? right? So I mean, it's just when there's I mean, we saw it when people want to change something, then we ended up, the yeah. community divided on it, and we ended up going to court. So, <laughs> uh, that, that's, once you put a name onto something, it's just very hard to change it, even though the policy is, it's not there forever. So I just feel that our be motion, hard. It's a policy that's what policies are for. Yeah. That's right. I just feel <laughs> like clear, it would be clear, better right? to be right. in the minutes that, right. I mean, I'm willing fine, to approve right? it if um, that piece of the policy is stressed. Do you have the policy right there? Yeah, yeah I mean, that can be. So you can include that language in the policy. Yeah, consistent with the policy, we could say something yeah. like consistent with the policy. The reservation of rights, the dedication of a particular facility does not guarantee that the dedication name or memorial will exist in perpetuity. Right. Yeah. There you right. go. There you go. Just use that language in your motion. And I and I think, and I know Brad understands that. We've, we've right. reviewed the policy yeah. together, and um, I think it's a, a thoughtful gesture, and it's good caution though too Marlon. Okay. So in in doing a motion for this, do we did we name the name or do we no. keep it still generic? No, because it's supposed to be a surprise right. from reading the letter. Gotcha. It's supposed to be a surprise. So you're just approving the, the naming yeah of the field, but not the name. Yeah. According to policy. <laughs> okay, right. And I believe it's now called the B field. The B field, yeah. Does anybody want to take a stab at that? Go for it, Jen. Okay, so I will motion that we approve, accept the recommendation to rename the B field um, at Maple Street Park with um, a nod to the policy, the reservation of rights that um, we remind them that there's the dedication of a particular facility does not guarantee that the dedication name or memorial will exist in perpetuity. Perfect. Does that cover it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will second it. We have a second from Marla. Any further discussion? No? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. All right. So what? So just real quick, one thing that's interesting, right, is like we're the we're the Prudential Committee, we're the same board, right? But that policy is actually in under CCSU. But like when we're the board of Parks and Rec, is it really CCSU? 
it's really the, the policy is really um, each board just like your negotiated contract is those policies are accepted by each board locally and then at the CCSU level so yep. you, you all see them you all approve them locally and then they get up for, go well, I guess you don't really it's approve It's kind of a technicality about what we call it, though, is all I'm saying. Yes, you know, you're like, right. I'm just, I'm just kind of wondering There's about that. It's always about the separation between right, when EJR. we're the school board and when we're the Parks and Rec board, right? Mm -hmm. And there's even that thing that we have, the power that we have to tax, right, that right. comes with that. That's actually very not. School boards don't have that. Through your charter. It's, mm -hmm. it's only the charter that has, right. you know. And so it's because we're a PC. Yes. Right, exactly, right? And so... I don't know that we need different and separate policies, right. it's, but it's, you can see where it's applicable. Yeah, right. Like, mm -hmm. or there's potential to kind of check in on those, you know. And usually, some of those policies bubble up because of the local need, and these have been local needs in yeah. different places. So yeah. you've had this local need before, right? And so I guess so. Maybe that's the only thing is when it comes up for review. I think that would be my only request to the policy committee is, and maybe it won't even be you, maybe we all have to remember, and whoever <laughs> is now the next person on the policy committee, when it would come up is to remember to look at those kinds of things, to be like, is to there, the does it need a separation nice. between, because like school fields are different from park fields, mm -hmm. just as a specific example, mm -hmm. but they might be different. You might take a separate stance of, Think what's happening at Maple Street Park versus what's happening behind ADL mm -hmm. because one's really the school right. and the other one is right. really Parks and Rec. You know, maybe they, they, or there would be room for different rules. Mm -hmm. It's it's don't interest. know, right? Well, you know, maybe it's it's general enough and it's good enough I that think, it, that it I applies. Mean, it, it, I don't see yeah. anything that well, needs to be different. Yeah. I'm just kind mm -hmm. of like putting it out there. Right. right. And it's up for review because it's almost 12 years old, but then you stop and say, do we need to put this on hold even further based on the red and what's happening with that? Because then that could change more things if we come together. Right. Oh, yeah, but that could so, always change. That's always yeah, going to be out there. So we should do, we, everything's just going to keep going. We'll I just think, keep going. Cycle. The, right. the main thing yeah, at yeah. CCSU level, what happens with the policies are um, like Westford has pieces of a rec department that's involved we do too so when we discuss it or have always approved it there are certain policies that do pertain because the it's run by the CCSU so the CCSU board adopts it so there's some policies that we as a PC brought has brought forth because we wanted it changed, and yeah. The, yeah. the other boards and just the other districts have been great about approving it, because when it just involves S6 Junk, Junction, Rex, and Park, right. they've yeah. been very good about it, as have we mm -hmm. from Westford mm -hmm. or the high school. Yeah, which I guess is the case where would there need to be any, or would we want to have a little separate section where it's specific enough that it's just about Parks and Rec? Well, I think some of the park and recs, recs and rec and parks, that right? Um, bylaws sort of separate some of that out too. Okay. You know, so there's so some of those does. things in another level. Yep. But for this policy, naming of a field yeah, fit right. very it well fits. under right. under the policy right. at hand. Yep. Okay, well, there's just one, one last thing here uh, before we adjourn is to talk about any future agenda items. I just wanted to remind oh. folks that on March 24th, if you don't have it in your calendars, to mark that date. And that's the date, since we've been talking about Essex Junction, Rec, and Parks, that you have your annual meeting oh, by law with the, select, uh, with the village trustees. trustees. So they meet every yes. other Tuesday, so this is the first available time. I know we're supposed to meet the first week in March, but they, they weren't available. So we all agreed it was fine, if it's fine with you, to meet on the 24th of March. And more than likely, Ben will be meeting at the Village. And it'll be at the Village Hall, probably, right? Yeah. 
We usually Brad gives an update. Mm -hmm. I and I was wondering. We discussed last year. Jeff Carr came to mm -hmm. the meeting, and he was discussing shared services. And one thing he um, raised was um, the rec departments, mm -hmm. and he talked about. Um, to consider our park district. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if that's the time for us to learn about it. Would you like me to ask Pat Scheidel to have Mr. Carr available for the meeting so we can learn more or about- Or Mr. Scheidel, if they could explain the park district concept to us. Well. Because of the doing? red <laughs> study, <laughs> that's going to come up. So. Yeah, that's a, that that's a really good suggestion. Don't say so. that too loud, Tim. Jeff time? Carr. <laughs> C-A-R. Do you know what time it is? Well, I mean, that was going to be my question. So what's the meeting for? Park. Why are we meeting? A what do we do there? District. What are we supposed to be well, doing? You know, what, what do I need to prepare? Yeah. You know, like. And what time is the meeting? We... Should be at 6.30. 6 yeah. 6.30, okay. Thank you. It's a, yeah. it's a required meeting that we have uh, as an outcome of the um, court hearing um, so that you make sure you're all on the same page like with, with what's happening with Trustees the alignment and and, yeah and communication is solid <laughs> and if there's any changes in the wind we're that you have an at, opportunity to talk yep. about it and Brad does a, a typically a, a annual update of any changes happening um, and, and probably will provide some of what you saw in your org notes mm -hmm. as far as those updates already so yeah he's already been invited as well right okay well that's a good reminder about that so yeah I thought I'd take a minute to just well, make sure because when you get an email our regular March meeting next meeting that's at summit right that will be 3 30 at, at summit street school on Monday March 16th and then the 24th, the following week. So. Ah, so that's the week I was supposed to leave, but maybe I can leave on Tuesday. So do we want to, as part of that particular meeting, do any kind of a walkthrough of the uh, playground area? Yes, we will. Before or after the meeting, or before or as part of the meeting? It starts at 3.30. Uh, what kind of availability Thank you for asking this question. What kind of availability do you have if you want to spend some time on that playground? Because the Natural Playground Committee talked about having some opportunity to explain um, where sure. things were and to be actually on the playground. Do you think a 3 o'clock start would be too difficult? It's the same for me, whether it's 3 or 3.30, in all honesty. Yeah. I mean, we could start there. I can do whatever. Okay. I mean, if someone can't come, they can just come at 3.30. That's right. I mean, if there's one person. I mean, if right. a bunch of us can't make it, but yeah. I think, right? It'd be nice yeah. if a quorum could, could right. attend. Um, are, you, are you going out of town after that? I am, so that's the beginning of that week. So I will just try to figure out. I can probably schedule. I didn't book anything yet, so I can probably book to f that's the evening so I can't make it up to the flight but I can probably leave on Tuesday are you that's so what I would try you to won't do. be available so then, then on the 24th so then won't be for the 24th yeah. so you just make sure that the three of you at least and yeah if David yeah I'll be there okay so we have a quorum are you headed back to France I have to go back to France we're on rotation now so like every six weeks I have to okay. go back basically wow <laughs> so is what it looks like now wow for now so we're going to try to do two weeks at a time but I'll so you go for two and then you're back for six something like that yeah I mean that's what it is right now so we'll see it's, there's three of us plus my boss so that, it's like every eight weeks you're up yeah okay so a tour of Summit playground area um, as something in the future but being the next meeting in the future um, anything else any other items um, I thought I would add the EJRP accreditation process. You had asked about that to the village meeting. 
Does that make more sense, or do you want to have yeah. that at your it's summit meeting? Like I think it's probably better to have part of that, that joint meeting. Okay. You know, any, any information that applies to EJRP that okay. informational is good for both, both groups. Okay. Yep. So. And then the principal report will be, um, you know, at 3.30, and I'm sure um, that will be a 20-minute report with students. And right. um, I'm sure by then we'll have some legislative updates. Yeah, that would um, be good. Tim German joined the board chairs uh, as the Senator uh, Zuckerman uh, at our training last Thursday. It might be timely to have a legislative update to see uh, because it's close it's to crossover yeah. date mm -hmm. for your bills to see if anything is in motion there. Um, the U46 board invited him to attend their board meeting instead of doing a, a legislative dessert for him to see what their budget is, what their um, the impact of some of the legislation. Would we be including Paul in that as well. Hmm? Would we be including Paul Dane as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So y you could even include Linda Myers if you wanted or, or other folks, but um, they, I guess the reason for Tim is because he was seated on the uh, House Education on the Committee. Education committee. Right. Um, and so was Senator Zuckerman. So that's the reason they were in attendance at um, right. the meeting we attended. Um, but we can invite whomever you'd like, but it would be nice to know who, so we can give them enough advance notice because they're busy in session right now. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't feel like, I guess the point I'm trying to make in a really roundabout way <laughs> is um, it doesn't seem like we were in front of it enough to schedule a legislative dessert. Right. So instead, it's similar to when Linda Waite Simpson came to us and talked to us about mm -hmm. the timeline for the red and the tax incentives and right. the encouragement um, and the information she shared, which propelled us into motion. And I think um, listening to uh, some of their needs and for them to listen to some of your needs, I think um, for your March meeting would be timely. Yeah, I, I'm in favor of that. Sounds good. Are we at the point, I'm trying to remember the timeline with leaders that were, were supposed to be giving our needs assessments to you at mm -hmm. this point as board members. We're supposed to be providing Mike with uh, thoughts of what we would like as the needs for next year mm -hmm. for the annual work plan. So um, those have to be given to Mike, but on the 24th, would we be discussing them or will we have already decided that at CCSU board level? When do we meet in March for CCSU? Uh, March 30th, it's the very end of the month. It's the end of the month. The SU board, right? Yeah. yeah. It might extend into the April. Oh, but then the yeah, SU board isn't it. meeting. But well, we have yeah, at least at least two. Well, have at least one other leaders at work meeting as well. There's also a CCSU board meeting in May, May 26. So right. I think that fits in. Yeah, the, right. Do you remember? Does that fit into the timeline that we're looking? It's at? at the tail end of the timeline. Yeah, for that, the annual work. Plan. Yeah, yeah, it is at the tail end of that timeline. Yeah, so anything you can get ahead of time would be yes. great. But at least you know that there's at least another meeting scheduled if you wanted to wait to finalize. Because anything. if we get back on the timeline, then we've got to do the summative eval yep. of the superintendent. Um, I believe it's in June. And we don't meet in June as a CCSU board. Right. Well, June, July time frame is yeah. putting so. that together. You all sh also should be thinking about planning day and when you want to schedule that. Okay, we can we can start the process of that, yeah. but we'll we won't finalize obviously it finalize it. Two because board members <laughs> coming. We need the new people. Yeah. Right, we kind of yeah. need their their input but as well. But at least start to get a frame yeah. for, a fu for a future agenda items strategic discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm always I'm going to say it every month. And Very I got good. no traction at the SU meeting. It sounded, I, my proposal was to have the SU board do that, but I got nothing on that. No, you so. didn't. On um, what? 
strategic. That, that to me, we could divide it up, and the SU board could be doing more the strategic like vision job of the, what the school board is supposed to be doing. I mean, we have that division. They could do it. It's the joint of the three boards, but they didn't really go anywhere. No one really signed up to do it. And it's like we don't meet enough, and we didn't want to meet more, and there wasn't really a lot of interest. So that means that we should do it, you know, on this board. We should do think about, you know, mm -hmm. those things about where where are we going? What what mm -hmm. what do we want to be when we grow up? You know, mm -hmm. you know, twenty years from now, what should it look like? How do we want to talk about that? Right. I think you that know. that's primarily because both those boards um, are a year in advance of where you're working with the appreciative inquiry, primarily because of the change that happened in your schedule. But Westford just had their summit last Saturday, so they had this whole long-range planning event to create a vision for their school. Okay. U46 is having theirs in June. So yes, right. they're in process of some like long-range okay, planning so efforts. So that means we need so to start talking about. And it. that's how that was the other yeah, one. Yeah, and you board. were going to go, and right. then you got kind of. Um, You're right. Yeah, out I know. Of well, sync. some things. Right. Mm -hmm. We had to adjust our schedule. You did. That's right. Just, so it was the right thing to do. Right. Um, so that's the other thing is maybe maybe not before the next meeting, but we still need to then set up dates with. Mary Jane as far as when we're going to come back take it back up again right and that's why I brought up planning day because yep. you've always had it for half a day but you talked about um, because you couldn't make that meeting making up that training session so we're talking about making it a full day yep. mm -hmm. so that's a, a time commitment um, yep that I wanted to make sure you had enough time to talk to your employers and right mm -hmm. Okay. See if you're in town. Can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's important. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Anything else comes to mind of folks? Is it? Oh, just to let you know, uh, at the rec department level, uh, Brad brought up that the strategic plan needs to be start developed for the rec department. Mm -hmm. So any thought processes probably should go through to Brad or we should talk about it as a PC I think mm -hmm. um, okay. and that may not happen in March or May but I think talking about strategic mm -hmm. planning mm -hmm. saying as they're under our guidance I think we should be involved okay. with this and how it's working mm -hmm. Good okay. point. All right. Well, I want to thank uh, Principal Ryan for hosting us today and uh, setting up uh, some really, really cool presentations for us today. Yeah. Thank it you. Was wonderful. All right, everyone. We're adjourned.